Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a complex trigonometric equation, a very imaginary trigonometric equation. We have cosine of z equals i and we're going to be solving for z values. Great, you probably know how to solve if cosine z is equal to 1 or 1 half root 3 over 2, some of those special angles where you can kind of find z easily, right? For example, if cosine z is 1 half, then z can be 60 degrees or pi over 3 radians as well as some other angles, right? So let's go ahead and take a look, but in this case, we have the cosine of an angle being imaginary. So do you think z is going to be imaginary or complex or non-real? Let's find out. First of all, I want to look at the Pythagorean theorem because it's fun, but not the a squared plus b squared equals c squared version, the trigonometric version, which is sine squared z plus cosine squared z equals 1. Since we know that cosine z is equal to 1, hopefully from here we can find sine z. If you square i, you're going to get i squared and sine squared plus i squared equals 1. i squared is negative 1. If you add 1 to both sides, you're going to get sine squared z equals 2, which means sine z is root 2 or negative root 2. Uh-oh, sine z is real, is it? But does that mean z is real? No. The problem is sine and cosine needs, need to be between negative 1 and 1 inclusive if z is a real number. This shows z is not real. Are you convinced? Hopefully. But uh, does the, do these values really help us like to find the angle? I don't think so. I could be wrong though. If you know of another method that I didn't mention here, please let us know in the comment section. I'm curious to know. All right, so what are we supposed to do then? We could go for the easy route and say, okay, if cosine z is equal to i, then doesn't that mean z is equal to arc cosine of i or something like that? Okay, that would be a really cheap solution, don't you think? That's what Wolfram Alpha provides, by the way. Very cheap solution. Okay, anyways, that's what it is. But let's go ahead and actually find out what the solutions are, okay? So for that one, I want you to remember Euler's formula. Do you remember Euler's formula? Okay, we talked about it in my lecture videos. You can go ahead and check them out if you're new to complex numbers or if you're not familiar with Euler's formula. But Euler said e to the power iz can be written as cosine z plus i sine z. I think this was a major breakthrough because imagine you have an exponential function, you have two trigonometric functions, and you're expressing the exponential in terms of the trigonometric, and on top of everything, you're including an imaginary number in the process, which is unimaginably mind-blowing. Anyways, that's Euler, so I guess for him, that's normal. So this is e to the iz, and then we're going to replace z with negative z. That's going to give us e to the negative iz, and then cosine of negative z is cosine z because cosine is even, but sine of negative z is negative sine of z because sine is odd. So we get two equations. Let's go ahead and work these out. How do we work them out? We add these up. Our goal is to isolate cosine. If your goal was to isolate sine, you would subtract, but we're going to add because we want to get rid of the sine z, especially i sine z, because you don't want that imaginary piece, do you? Now, we get the following, e to the iz plus e to the negative iz equals 2 cosine z, but I do need cosine z. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by 2 and switch sides so that cosine z can be on the left-hand side, which is a little better, for some people at least. So, what do we do? We got an identity for cosine. Obviously, if you already know this formula, you don't have to derive it, but sometimes it's fun practice, or if you don't remember the formula, but you know how to come up with it, it's always a good thing to do, especially if you have time on a test, right? If it's multiple choice, then it's a different story. But we are given that cosine z is equal to i. So we can go ahead and set this equal to i, and then forget about the cosine, and focus on this equation and solve for c. Easy, right? We turn the cosine into an exponential, which is awesome, because you don't really have a way of 
algebraically solving a trigonometric equation if it's not one of those special angles. In the case of imaginary, you have no choice, right? Now, let's go ahead and see how we can solve for z from here. That's going to be taking some, you know, manipulations, un untangling stuff. Let's do it. First of all, I want to do the cross multiplication because that will be a good thing to do. That will give us 2i. And then, using the reciprocal or the negative exponent rule, e to the power of negative iz can be written as 1 over e to the power iz, and this sum is equal to 2i. Beautiful. Now, a number and its, excuse me, a number and its reciprocal are being added, and we're getting 2i. So, can each of these be i? 1 over i is not i, unfortunately, it's negative i. If you add them, you're going to get a 0. So, we have to do something else. And it's not easily guessable. That's why uh, this problem is cool because it doesn't let you guess. Okay? Unless you're super good at guessing. But let's go ahead and see how we can solve it. I'm going to call this W because it's just another complex number, right? And then this gives us W plus 1 over W equals 2i. And then multiply everything by W. W squared plus 1 equals 2i. W. Put everything on the same side, making this a complete quadratic and we can solve it because we have something called the quadratic formula the quadratic formula you know that right w equals negative b which is 2i plus minus the square root of b squared that's negative 2i quantity squared minus 4ac which is minus 4 and something interesting happens here negative 2i when squared is going to give you negative 4 negative 4 minus 4 is negative 8 uh oh this is another imaginary that's just going to be 2 root 2i divided by 2. Obviously, we can divide everything by 2. That gives us i plus minus root 2i. But we can write it even in a simpler way with factoring, using factoring like this. So far, so good. Okay, I hope you've gotten this far, but we're not done. But we're close. So this is w, but what is w? w is e to the iz. Let's replace w with e to the iz. And then try to solve for z, right? Well, it's kind of easy because e to the iz is imaginary, so we basically have two possibilities. It's either going to be here or here, right? Because we have a pure imaginary number with the real part zero. Cool. Now, we can go ahead and natural log both sides, but before that, let's go ahead and first split it up into two cases. First, a positive case. Okay, because 1 minus root 2 is negative. Remember that? That's why I said it's going to be in two places. Let's go ahead and now natural log both sides, right? And that's going to give us iz equals ln. Oh, before that, I need to do one more step. Sorry about that. Let's write the i as a polar number, like the polar form. i, uh, since on the argon plane, i is going to be appearing here. Its modulus is going to be 1, and the uh, argument is just going to be pi over 2 radians. So we can kind of write it as e to the power i pi over 2, but not only that, you're also allowed to add multiples of 2 pi because of the period. Now, we can go ahead and natural log iz equals ln 1 plus root 2. Remember, this is a real value, ln plus i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. And then we're going to divide by i? No, we're going to multiply by negative i. That's what I usually do. When we do, this is going to become 1. So we're going to get z equals pi over 2 plus 2 pi n minus i times ln 1 plus root 2. And similarly, for the other case, which is e to the iz equals 1 minus root 2i, you can do the same thing. But one thing that you need to be careful about is the argument is going to be negative pi over 2 because this is a negative number that puts it in the uh, negative region of the imaginary axis, so on and so forth. And this brings us to the result from Wolfram well, Alpha. Of course, you can also get the result that you're looking for with a good prompt. Cosine inverse of i is going to be this. And then arc cosine i, of course, can also be written like this. If you ask Wolfram well, Alpha this way, then it'll answer correctly. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and maybe I'll see you on my other channel, CyberMath. Until next time, bye-bye.